First Story by Anonymous It was a cold winter evening in Boston, Massachusetts, and I had just finished a long day at work. The wind cut through my coat like a knife as I hurried along the dimly lit streets towards my small apartment in the North End. The neighborhood was usually vibrant and filled with life, but that night, it felt eerily quiet. As I reached my doorstep and fumbled for my keys, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. My heart raced, and I turned around, scanning the darkened street. At first, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. Just a few distant figures bundled up against the chill. But one figure stood out, a man in a dark overcoat and a fedora, his face obscured by shadows. I dismissed it as paranoia, unlocked my door, and stepped inside, locking it firmly behind me. But the unease lingered. I peeked through my window blinds and gasped. The same man was standing across the street, staring right at me. His eyes seemed to pierce through the darkness, and I could feel their intensity even from a distance. My heart pounded as I drew the curtains shut. I called the police, but they told me they couldn't do much without more evidence. I stayed up all night, watching the street from behind my blinds. The man didn't move an inch, his eyes never leaving my window. Morning finally arrived, and the stranger was gone. I cautiously left my apartment, looking over my shoulder with every step. The following days were tense. I kept spotting the mysterious man at a distance, always watching, always waiting. One evening, as I returned home, I found my front door ajar. Panic surged through me. I stepped inside cautiously, and the chilling realization hit me like a sledgehammer. The intruder had been here, leaving behind a sinister message, a series of photographs pinned to my wall. The photos were of me, taken from different angles, in different places. Some were close-ups, capturing my every expression, while others were taken from afar, as if the stalker had been observing me for a long time. Fear gnawed at my insides as I tore the photos down and called the police again. They arrived quickly, but the stalker had vanished once more. The photos were sent for analysis, but they revealed no leads. My nights became sleepless, my days filled with dread. I lived in constant fear, never knowing when he would strike again. Weeks turned into months, and the stalking continued. My life had become a nightmare. I considered moving away changing my identity, anything to escape the relentless pursuit. But one fateful night, as I returned home, the man was waiting for me in the hallway, a malevolent grin on his face. I froze, unable to move, unable to scream. The stalker approached, his steps slow and deliberate. I felt a paralyzing fear as he whispered words that chilled my soul. He knew everything about me, every detail of my life. That night, the nightmare became a reality. The stalker had invaded my home, my sanctuary. I couldn't escape, and I couldn't hide. My life was no longer my own. It belonged to the relentless pursuer who had haunted my every step. Second Story by Emily Johnson it all began in the bustling heart of New York City, where I lived in a cozy apartment on the Upper West Side. The city's energy had always filled me with excitement, but little did I know that the chaos of Manhattan would soon be replaced by an insidious sense of dread. One evening, after a long day of work, I noticed a man who seemed out of place among the teeming crowds of Times Square. He wore a dark suit and sunglasses, an odd choice for the fading twilight. I brushed it off as eccentricity and continued my journey home. As I reached my apartment building, I glanced behind me and gasped. 
the man from Times Square was there, lingering in the shadows. His eyes bore into me, even through the reflection in the glass door. I hurried inside and locked the door, my heart pounding. Night after night, the stranger appeared, always at a distance, but always watching. I reported it to the police, but like in the first story, they said there was little they could do without concrete evidence. I installed security cameras and kept my blinds closed, but it offered little comfort. The true terror began when the stalker's presence transcended the streets. He somehow obtained my phone number and began sending me unsettling messages. They were cryptic, filled with references to my daily routine and personal life. It was as if he had become an invisible shadow, always lurking nearby. One day, I received a package at my door, addressed to me. Inside, I found a collection of photographs, images of me taken in my apartment, in the park, at work. The stalker had invaded my private spaces, capturing my every move. I felt violated, trapped in my own life. I moved to a new apartment, changed my number, and took every precaution, but the stalker was relentless. He sent letters, each one more disturbing than the last. He knew my deepest fears, my most intimate secrets. It was as if he had become a malevolent specter, haunting my every thought. I sought help from private investigators, but they could find no trace of the man. My life unraveled as I became a prisoner to my own fear. Sleepless nights turned into paranoia-filled days. I no longer recognized the vibrant city that had once been my home. One fateful night, as I returned to my new apartment, I heard a faint sound, a whisper, a breath. Panic surged through me as I searched every room. And then, in the dimly lit hallway, I saw him, the stalker. His presence was suffocating, his intentions clear. He advanced towards me, his steps deliberate. I had nowhere to run, no one to turn to. The shadows seemed to close in around us as he whispered words that sent shivers down my spine. He knew me better than anyone ever should. That night, my world collapsed into darkness. The stalker had invaded my home, my life, my very soul. I was trapped in a nightmare with no escape. Third Story by Daniel Anderson My story begins in the quiet suburbs of Chicago, Illinois. I had always relished the peaceful atmosphere, but little did I know that tranquility could be shattered by a single individual's obsession. It was a chilly autumn evening when I first noticed her. A woman, impeccably dressed and strikingly beautiful, stood at the edge of my favorite coffee shop. Her intense gaze never wavered from me as I sipped my latte and read the newspaper. I chalked it up to coincidence, but unease began to creep in. Days turned into weeks, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. No matter where I went, grocery stores, the gym, even my workplace, I would glimpse her, always at a distance but always watching. The sense of dread grew with each passing day. I decided to confront her, to put an end to this relentless pursuit. I approached her outside the coffee shop and demanded answers. She simply smiled, her eyes devoid of any emotion, and said nothing. That's when I knew I was dealing with something far more sinister than a mere infatuation. The woman's presence became invasive. She began sending letters to my home, filled with details about my daily routine, my friends, and my family. It was as if she had infiltrated every aspect of my life. I changed locks, installed security systems, but nothing could deter her. One evening, I returned home to a chilling sight. The woman was inside my house, calmly sipping a cup of tea at my kitchen table. 
I was paralyzed with fear, unable to comprehend how she had breached my defenses. She spoke, her voice soft and melodic, but her words were a nightmare incarnate. She knew everything about me, my deepest fears, my most cherished memories. It was as if she had become a malevolent force, consuming my very essence. I tried to flee, but she moved with preternatural speed, blocking my every escape route. For weeks, I was trapped in a living nightmare. The stalker's presence was inescapable, her obsession with me unrelenting. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't find solace anywhere. My life had become a prison of my own making. One fateful night, as I lay in my bed, she appeared at the foot of it, her eyes burning with an unholy intensity. I begged her to leave me alone, to release me from her suffocating grip. But she only leaned closer, her breath hot against my ear, and whispered words that sent terror coursing through my veins. She had become a part of me, an unshakable specter that haunted my every thought. There was no escape from the relentless pursuit, and I was left to wonder if I would ever find freedom from the nightmare that had become my life. Thank you for watching whole video. Check this video you see on the screen, it's one of my favorite. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash that like to support my free and daily content for you. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment and tell me what story got you chills.